Welcome to the Scoop School podcast, where we tackle your conundrums about the retail ice cream and frozen dessert business. And now, here's your host. He's so ice cream, he called his kids Ben and Jerry. And they're girls. The ice cream bloke and self-appointed headmaster of Scoop School, Steve Christensen. G'day Ice Cream Lovers, broadcasting here from our Scoop School facility in St. Louis, Missouri. Nice to have you here for this episode of the podcast. Now we do want to thank our special sponsor for this podcast, which is Green Mountain Flavors. Stan and his crew there do a great job of really looking at some very, very high quality and unique flavor extracts for your ice cream or frozen dessert business. And so you can go to greenmountainflavors.com, have a great look at the range that they have there, and talk to Stan. He's the man there that'll be able to to help you out. Stan is the man. Uh, so Green Mountain Flavors, specialty extracts for ice cream. We thank them for their sponsorship of this podcast. Now, this particular episode of the podcast, we're talking about your weekly ordering and the process of how to do that a little bit more effectively. Because you'll find that ordering, admin, rostering, banking are all of those things that are important but not urgent things that we do in our ice cream businesses. And so the process of making sure that you're doing a weekly order, that you don't run out of product, that customers don't walk away uh, disappointed because you've run out of gummy bears for the third week in a row. It's important that you have a good handle on your ordering process. And typically that's done every Monday. Most ice cream stores, they enjoy Monday as their admin day because it's our slowest day of the week. So take an opportunity to, on every Monday, pull out a special sheet which will allow you to be able to do that weekly ordering. Now, I have in the attachments here in the show notes a document that we use and we talk about in class. It's called a weekly order and inventory sheet. Now, the beauty of this sheet is that you're doing your weekly inventory at the same time as you are doing your ordering. And that's important because you don't want to leave inventory to the last day of the month. Typically, the stores that do that tend to lose product in theft because they're not monitoring inventory and and stock levels throughout the month. So what you do is you print out this sheet. You need to have one sheet for each supplier that you have. So if you have, let's say, a Cisco or a US Foods or a Gordon Food Service, that's your main broadline food distributor, and then you might have your mix company, the chocolate company, the cone company, the cup company. You want one of these sheets for each one of those suppliers or each one of those vendors. Next, you're going to want to have a build to number for every item that they supply to you. So let's start off with uh, M&Ms. So the ABC Chocolate Company supplies you with M&M's, Snickers, Butterfinger, and all these kind of things. Um, The top line item, let's say, is mini M&M's. Now, you need to get an understanding either through your own operation or from the vendor themselves that you should have a certain amount of boxes on hand at any given time. That's called a build to number or a par number. I'll say that in American. Build to number or a par number. Uh, (laughs) We have to do that all the time living in this beautiful country. Uh, So the bill to number or the par number is again the number that you're building to. So you want to have at least, let's say if our box of mini uh, M&Ms is is two is our bill to number. So we want to make sure that we can build to or have two boxes there at any given time. So as we're going through our weekly order and inventory sheet, we take an inventory of what we have. Let's say we only have one box of mini M&Ms. Our bill to number is two, so we need to order another one. Next one down, Butterfinger. They come in a smaller box. Our bill to number is 10. We have three in inventory, so we need to order seven. Uh, next one down might be Snickers. We have a bill to number of five. We have four in inventory, so we need to order one. And so you go through this process using the sheet or a similar sheet where you're actually looking at what you've got, what you need, and then filling the gap there with your ordering process. Then you simply take that sheet and you call the vendor and basically go down the list. I need uh, M&Ms, I need uh, Snickers, I need Butterfinger, I need all of these different things. And you'll find that it'll be a lot easier that way. Some of the vendors will actually do this for you 
Um, one of our stores had a vendor that would come in and they'd actually do our inventory for us and basically fill out the order. It's becoming rarer and rarer these days. But it's up to you to make sure that you don't run out of product, that you're not paying exorbitant prices by going to another vendor that can get emergency product to you. This needs to be done each and every week and this inventory and order sheet with your bill to or par numbers will certainly help you do that. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, again, if you have any questions about the sheet that's down here in the show notes or anything else in relation to running your ice cream store effectively and building your business, please reach out to us at scoopschool.com. My email address is steve at scoopschool.com. Thank you, Stan, at Green Mountain Flavors for providing sponsorship for this episode. Keep on scooping, folks, and we'll see you in the next one.